Right, so here I'm going to show you the ladder interface. Um, I've just shown you the grid interface. Um, ladder interface is a bit different. I personally use a ladder interface all the time, every day. Uh, I use this every day that I trade, just because I trade pre-race horse racing odds um, more or less all the time. So that's my preferred method. It depends what you're going to do. You have to decide what suits you most. But the uh, the ladder interface is by far the one for me. <clears throat> so. We've already seen the grid interface, which I've left open here on the right, just so you can relate the two. Uh, the ladder interface is probably a little bit more confusing the first time you see it, but it's actually a little bit better in my eyes. I'll explain why in a bit. So, if you look at Princess Lulu here, the the favourite, this is actually what I've got expressed in this column here on the left. So the the ladder interface, you can have several columns. Um, for the, just for the purpose of the video, I've only got two up. Normally, I have around about four. But I'll show you how to set up a profile in a little bit. So what you can see here is the available price to uh, available price to back is 2.02, .02 and the available price to lay is 2.04. If you look over to the ladder, it's exactly the same, except it's just expressed up, expressed up and down rather than left and right. Um, so you can see that's just gone up in price there, gone down in price. So just it's a little bit clearer on the eye possibly as well. Um, Similar sort of features along the top, you've got sort of like the race, um, the time and the sort of the amount of money matched on the whole market. Um, from there down you've got you've got your staking, color, uh, staking box up here in the top right. Um, you can change that manually, you know, 12, 5, whatever you want. Um, below that we've got some, some staking options as well, which I'll show you in a minute over on the left. From there you've got the names of the runners, uh, you can select whatever you like. Obviously this is quite a small race with only four runners, so you could choose... Uh, whichever one you like there in the second, we'll keep it the favourite and second favourite for now. On the left you've got the jockey, Ryan Moore, Dan O'Neill, probably heard of them. Trainers, Roger Varian, Richard Hannon. Uh, below that we've got the last traded price will always be in this box here in the middle on, on whatever ladder column you're on. So we can see the last traded price here was 2.04 you You've got on the left you've got the weight of money indicator again. Um, I've got it in the numerical one there, so obviously over the total of the money on the, the lay side here, as opposed to the back side, is 3.8 times more. Uh, over on the right, total amount of money traded on that specific uh, runner, so here we've got 25k, whereas only 11k has been um, traded on this one. Um, and then you've got it broken down further per price, so you can see at 2.28, £447 was traded, whereas at 2.10, £2,000 has been tra traded. Sorry. Um, so it's it's quite a good little indicator as well on, on the right there because you can see which prices have have taken the most money. It can be helpful for spotting possible support and resistance within the market. Uh, you've got obviously you've got left column and your right column. So your left column um, is not to be confused because there's a couple of different types of ways of having this set up, and they can actually be the other way around, uh, like opposites of each other. So looking at mine here on the left, you've got this is the money available to back. This is money that is sat, that is lay money available to be backed. So obviously, the shorter the price, the further down it's going to go. Whereas on the right, you've got available money to lay, back money available to lay. So if the price was to drift, this money would need to be matched first. Okay. Um, other than that, you've just got your odds down the middle, which we've, we've sort of already alluded to. Um, the further up you go, the bigger the price. Uh, on the left, you've got a small sidebar, which I'll, I'll cover in uh, in the charts uh, in a later video. Um, and on the right, you've just got sort of this is just the, the whole market depth, so it allows you to scroll all the way up and down, a bit like your browser window when you're on a website. So it's just gone suspended there. That's basically what it looks like when when a race goes into suspended. It's just a uh, a little bit of coincidence. If we look over on the left, you'll see that there's actually more options now on our market navigator because we've got a market open. Uh, something I mentioned earlier, so I may as well explain these now. So first at the top, I mean some of these wouldn't be here if uh, if the market was actually closed. So OCO standard stands for orders cancels orders. Uh, now what that allows you to, if you open that one up, is you can pick a specific runner you want to do it on. You can pick a price you want to enter. You can pick a price you want to exit at. Um, so say you wanted to enter at 2.0, you could e exit at 1.9 say. Um, you could set your stake in here um, with the staking box and then you can either tick if you want it to hedge out across the whole market or if you want to leave the p potential profit or loss on that specific runner. Now, I don't really use this but you know I, I could see it would be useful for using it for maybe a morning to afternoon trade if you're going to leave the computer on. So you set your entry, you set your exit 
However, if the price goes in opposite direction and it doesn't go to where you expect it to, you can set a potential stop. So a potential stop at say 2.04. So if if you enter at 2 and you're hoping to exit your trade at 1.9 for a profit, um, but it went back to 2.04, you could then say I want the, the software to exit the position for me um, because I might not be around, whatever it may be. And then it allows you here with, with the plus numbers um, just because if it's, if it's already hit 2.04, the chances of you actually getting matched at 2.04 is unlikely as well. So you might say, look, I'm happy for it to exit at plus one, which would be 2.06. Uh, so it's just a nice little function you can set for the morning, or, or that's what I'd probably use it for if I was to use it, um, to manage your sort of risk while you're away from the screen. Um, but obviously everybody's got their own sort of opinion on things and they, they might use it for slightly different things. Market Navigator we've seen before with the horses. Staking and tools. So here currently I've got uh, all staking like we had in the middle of the uh, the grid interface in the grid video. Um, it's set to 6 there but basically if I just change that to 10 for example and refresh it then you see it changes my stakes um, on, on other outcomes yeah? So for the whole market. Obviously that's a little refresh button there, just if you change some of your stakes, sometimes you need to hit the refresh button. Looking at the uh, the staking, there's several different types of staking here, um, and you might not use all of them, but I'll explain what they are anyway. So you've got uh, the blue one here, staking, that is just your normal, typical kind of staking. So you put the number in and that is the stake, £10. Uh, liability, for example, um, if you change it to liability staking and we're staking £10 at 1.9, the software automatically calculates the stake for me. So if I click on here at 1.94, you can see the software has calculated that at 1.94 for £10 liability, um, it needs to put a stake in of £9.40. Um, so basically, it just allows allows you to play stakes, probably more so on the lay side, and limit your potential loss. Might be more useful for in running whatever, whatever your uh, specific criteria that you you want to fill is it's up to you but uh, but that's that's what lay staking is tick profit is just just to decide how many how much profit you want per tick unhedged um, when it is matched so uh, that's just the next stage on from book profit really which book profit is exactly the same but it's in hedged so if I was to place a stake of a hundred pounds at two that might allow me two pounds per tick profit um, but whereas with, with that um, Book profit would mean two pounds per tick hedged, but with the tick profit it would mean unhedged. And then payout and exposure that they sort of speak for themselves as well. They're self-explanatory. So that's what the staking is at the top there. You've got a couple of different options down here. So fill or kill. Uh, basically, what that is is you allow to set a time period. So if you say for five seconds I want to stake uh, ten pounds, fill or kill. Uh, you place it in the market, five seconds later if the bet has not been matched, if it has not been filled it will actually kill the bet and remove it, like it's just done there on the screen without me actually touching it. So that's what fill or kill is. Tick offset, you can set your stakes to be offsetted, well your, your exit position to be offsetted from your entry, so it's a little bit like the OCO but a, a more simpler version, so if I placed four ticks offset and a bet was matched at 2.0 you would see that a bet would then a place a lay bet would place four ticks away without me actually having to do anything further to that you can decide whether it's a hedge value or or if it's fully matched meaning if you're maybe in play for example and the prices are spiking around um, and only half of it gets matched it won't actually place that counter bet however many ticks you've decided away from it until the whole stake is fully matched uh, so that's what tick offset is and stop loss is sort of like the second part of the OCO um, so you can you can place a bet um, should it be matched if it goes against you you set how many ticks it would go against you and then you place the stop how many ticks away from that that actual stop loss you would uh, you would place your bet in the market you can have that trailing so if the price moves with you your your stop loss follows it so you don't actually end up going back on yourself uh, or you can again hedge across the whole market or you can cancel bets as well so that's what the staking and tools um, column does there, it's quite useful obviously or you can do it all manually as well which is what I prefer to do. Ladder selector uh, only comes up when you've got the ladder open obviously there's four selections here so I could say in my second ladder I want to have that runner so it's just another way of choosing the different runners really so I can choose whichever one I want, I could put that in ladder two and uh, you know I could put the second favourite in ladder one